Mexico singles out Jews for particularly brutal punishment. The Jews in this worldview are really in a catch-22 situation. Antichrist will persecute them, but also, except for a small remnant who accept the Messiah at the end of time, the unbelieving Jews will perish uh, at the hands of uh, Christ uh, when he returns. Uh, so the, the role of Jews and attitudes toward Jews in this belief system is extremely important uh, and in some ways uh, extremely disturbing. According to believers, in the end, the Antichrist leads his armies against resistors in a final battle in the Valley of Megiddo in Israel. The Antichrist in the Battle of Armageddon builds a coalition from all four corners of the earth with all the kings of the earth who come marching uh, with their troops to this valley of Megiddo. All the armies of the earth are ready to take over the world from anybody who believes in a, in a faith other than the Antichrist. Satan's emissary has arrived at his destiny. He stands poised to wipe out the last vestiges of resistance and take absolute control of the earth. But it is at this 11th hour that Christ returns to do final battle. Why does God wait until this most desperate moment to send his son to our aid? Prophecy believers say that the time of Christ's arrival is preordained, that his return coincides with this lowest point in our power to resist evil. After the book of Revelation's dramatic buildup, the battle is anticlimactic. Christ will slay the Antichrist and his minions with truth, with the word of God. His exact words are unknown, but according to prophecy believers, this is no metaphor. Plenty of blood is spilled. There's imagery there of the Valley of Megiddo filling to the height of a horse's bridle with blood for thousands of square miles. The Antichrist and evil are vanquished in this fantastical scenario, but some believe this interpretation oversimplifies the Bible. The true place of faith includes doubt. Now that may seem like a very strange thing to say. It's certainly something that this particular brand of evangelical Christians don't want to have heard. They want simple to easy, under, easy to understand, 100% surety on everything. But I think that that's a naive hope. It itself is a kind of antichrist. Others say that the role of the Antichrist might even be constructive rather than destructive. If only we look to ourselves rather than to others we deem evil. This was the message of St. Augustine, an early church father in the 5th century AD. When Augustine preaches to his congregation on Antichrist, he says, each of you must question whether you are an Antichrist. That is, whether you pretend to be a Christian but really aren't a Christian, but are really acting against the meaning of Christ and Christ's love. We should always, as the great Christian teachers have insisted, investigate ourselves to see how far we share in the spirit of Antichrist. I think that, for me, is the ultimate meaning of this legend. The controversy over the nature of the Antichrist whether he's an external end times persecutor or a representation of an internal struggle between good and evil is as old as the origins of the idea and may never be resolved. What is clear is that the Antichrist, feared by some 